The theory of everything, but not the stupid movie. The theory of everything was something that Stephen Hawking pursued, but was unable to solve or resolve was unattainable. The film, The Theory of Everything, seemed to be mostly about Hawking's sex life. The theory of Everything is an attempt to reconcile general rev relativity and quantum field theory. The simple fact is that the two theories do not work together and it is driving theoretical physicists crazy. Well, they may not be crazy, but they certainly sound like they're crazy sometimes. They talk of 10 or maybe 11 or maybe more dimensions. They talk of infinite and endless universes. They talk of dark matter and dark energy and antimatter. They might as well be talking about dragons breathing fire. This is because theoretical physicists are on the front lines of our reality, or should I say, our lack of reality. There are very serious discussions about our universe being a hologram. Now you may say, that is ridiculous. I am not a hologram. Uh, don't talk to me, talk to the physicists. While we're talking about our system of seeing is much like a hologram. Light goes through our eyes and is processed and reinforced reformatted in our brains. Sounds like a hologram. The atomic structure is full of empty space and becomes even more empty the further down you go. What's that about? Are we all just probabilities as the two slit experiment suggests? Everything in the universe at the most infinitesimal degree of smallness is made of vibrating string. I should have known that. Obviously I'm being somewhat simplistic about these ideas because it is necessary to do so. The thoughts are so heady and far out that they need to be boiled down. Uh, let's look at things from a different perspective. There are other groups of scholars that study what could be put under the umbrella term of ancient knowledge. This would include precepts that go back to before the birth of organized religions. This is uh, another area of controversy. There is much talk on the internet of the Masons and the Illuminati harboring and shielding the secret knowledge. This too is uh, crazy talk. But there are interesting similarities between ancient knowledge and some of the latest thinking in cosmology and theoretical physics. There is a growing group of people who are exploring the unknown and far-fetched. This kind of thinking is being led by the theoretical physicists because they are aware that their mathematical calculations are revealing bizarre truths. It is also revealing how little we actually trust what would seem to be obvious. Why is there so much dark matter in the universe and what the heck is it? We don't have a clue. Why is the force of gravity in the universe so minuscule in the universe, yet does so much? We don't know, but we can speculate. Is it because the force of gravity is actually hiding in another dimension? What? I know. Crazy. I'm not going to try and explain things in detail because it's like going down a rabbit hole. I mean, you don't want me to get into the black hole information paradox. This leads me to the atheists because they know with complete certainty that there is no God. How do they know this? Because no one can prove there is one. But of course, they have no real knowledge about what really exists or doesn't exist. It has been theorized that in infinity everything is possibility. What is infinity? No one knows. People can say they know, but it is beyond knowing. To attempt to truly understand it is to court madness. It is pretty much a scientific certainty that the infinity of endless universes and multiple dimensions that there would be supreme beings. It is generally thought by science that we are probably at the bottom of the food chain as far as intelligent life goes. It seems pretty obvious that even if time were only 15 billion years old, that would be a lot of time for advanced beings to form. After all, human beings weren't much until about 5,000 years ago. I will offer a disclaimer about myself as being a man of faith, but with the big disadvantage of knowing all the reasons not to have faith. The study of ancient religions from Sumerians to the Hindus to the Mayans all suggest startling similarities. It is as if civilizations were started and then wiped out. There are basic truths they all share that seem co to coincide with the latest thinkings and theoretical physics. If you listen to Jesus and Buddha, even more basic understandings uh, is revealed. Uh, but it is dismissed by hardcore science uh, and atheists. I'm not even going to get into the teachings of that well-known wacko Plato. 
Hardcore scientists don't like to talk about multiple dimensions and endless universes. They don't want to know about the 11 dimensional, perturbative, uh, super string, super symmetric, super gravitational M theory. Neither do religious fanatics. There are peoples in the middle ground who are wondering, uh, is this such a thing as ancient knowledge that has been hidden from us? Is the time coming for the real truth to be revealed? Is it time for us to graduate out of the fourth dimension and make ourselves uh, comfortable in the fifth dimension? Or are your vibrations tuned to the right fr frequency uh, to make the trip? Or is Nietzsche right and we go to the fifth dimension only to be sent back to relive our own existence over and over again for eternity? Will the Anunnaki return on planet Nibiru, or is our destiny dictated by the Orion Nebula? I've heard talk that we all might get some official announcement as soon as August of this year. I played a silly man on the radio for years, so I don't expect anyone to take me seriously. Until it's too late. The Illuminati will probably kill me since I brought this up, but on the other hand, I could be the perfect person to disseminate this information. You never know. That's a motto to live by. You never know.